Hendrix, Jenny from Southern Savers. It's our Monday night Q&A, which is your chance to ask any questions that you have. Saving money, couponing, the sky's the limit. Um, but it's also a great time for us to have a topic where we can learn something new or get a refresher for some of you on other things. So um, this week we are going to talk um, meal planning, freezer cooking, the whole nine yards, um, which was uh, what everyone's kind of what they wanted the topic to be last week. So this is one where you guys really chose it, um, but it's a fun topic and it really is an important one um, because it is a piece of how we save in um, all of our grocery budgets. You know, if you're trying to coupon, but you're not necessarily men menu planning or meal planning or whatever you want to call it, um, you're really kind of missing a mark where you could have taken your grocery budget one more step further in terms of just reducing your overall cost. So it's a good topic, a good topic for us to hit on. And that's where we're gonna go tonight. Um, now, give me a second, because it always takes me a minute to get all my screens pulled up and make sure that I can follow comments and questions um, and that we're all on the same page. So if you have questions, you just leave them in the comments and I will see them as they pop in. Uh, and um, I will answer them. Now, not all the time do I answer immediately, so it always helps us to kind of stay on topic for a little bit and then jump back to questions. Um, so don't don't uh, get too frustrated if it takes me a few minutes to jump back into question mode. It just helps us to get more content covered if we go back and forth. Um, so as we dive in, um, before we get in to actual um, meal planning, I do want to hit um, on one, I guess, soapbox subject for me when it comes to meal planning. Um, and that is that I actually, I, you know, for a long time, I didn't meal plan um, because what I wanted to emphasize to people was that this isn't how I shop. So I am not sitting down and making a meal plan and then going to the store to buy those items. That is a way that you could shop, um, but it is not the way that I would recommend that you shop uh, because what you're doing when you when you function that way, meal plan and then totally shop based on the meal plan, is that I'm actually not getting items at their best price. Uh, I'm not shopping based on the sale. I'm just shopping because I put it on my, my meal plan that week. Um, and that's really not going to be the best savings for you. So the best savings is that we just shop completely off of sales and we build our meal plan off of what we already know that we have. So I gave all of you guys a tour of our pantry just a couple weeks ago. You can actually pop back in on our Facebook video tab and, and see that video. Um, it was a good 20 minute tour as people ask questions. But that's the point is that I have a ton of food in the pantry and a ton of food in the freezer outside. So that's my goal is to menu plan off of what's already here and keep buying what's on sale and then I stay stocked. I don't ever have to have something. So, you know, just to show you, I do have one thing that's on my shopping list. So this is my meal plan book and I've showed it to you guys before. It was kind of my little splurge. I don't know. You don't need a meal plan book. A piece of paper works the same. But this meal plan book is built on the, the idea that you're going to plan what you want to eat and you're going to go to the store and you're going to buy it. So look, it has a whole page just for your shopping list items. Do you see that? I have one, one thing. It's tortilla chips. Um, and that's because whenever I buy them, people eat them within an hour of them coming in the house. So we don't have any. Um, it's hard to buy six weeks worth, but it's also something that's always on sale. One brand or another, we are brand loyal. So that's it. Our whole meal plan for the week. And I need one thing. I really need tortilla chips for a couple reasons. Uh, we got our produce basket this past Saturday. We had a ton of, I can never say it right, tomatillas in there. And so we made a bunch of uh, salsa verde, the green salsa, um, but we have no chips to eat it with. So we just have jars of salsa now and we desperately need some chips, but we're really going to pair that with one of our meals this week. But that's what I want to emphasize first. Before we just get into how to meal plan, it is the fact that we really want to do this completely from our stockpile. So, you know, quick five second basics here on how we grocery shop. I buy the item when it's on sale and I buy enough of that item to last until it is on sale again. So I'm shopping like that every week, six weeks worth of what's on sale 
one week worth of what I have to have, which is usually nothing, uh, and then next week, six weeks worth of what's on sale. So my meal plan is not based on what's on sale, okay? Now, if you're just getting started, you obviously can't do that. You don't have a pantry that is the entire grocery store of what you will use. So you do want to meal plan based on what's on sale. And I know that's the opposite of what I'm telling you, but this is just as you're getting started, just for the first few weeks, because you need to slowly build your stockpile. You don't have anything in your pantry right now. You know, obviously eating from your pantry doesn't work if there's no food there. So to get started, we're still going to try to buy six weeks worth of what's on sale. But this week, if this is week one for you, then I am going to look at the grocery ad and say, okay, what meat is on sale this week? Uh, and what are some key ingredients that are also on sale that I could make some meals with? Um, and then let's stockpile six weeks worth of those items, but let's also plan a few items to get you through until next week and the week after. But come three or four weeks from now, you're going to have a really stocked pantry. So it's just to get you started that we're going to do this side by side with the grocery ad. Um, and, you know, Nicholas is chiming in too. Uh, you know, he lives in an apartment, so it's hard to have a big pantry. And I, I get that. When I first started couponing and kind of doing this system, we lived in a two-bedroom apartment with two kids uh, and a dog. So it was, it was tight quarters, uh, and we had a cupboard, one, um, where all of our food could live. So what I would recommend for you, Nicholas, is that in those settings, anyone that's in a tight setting, no, I can't have six weeks of every single thing that we would eat in our pantry. So let's instead focus on maybe having enough for like five key meals that we rotate through. I'm not saying you're going to eat the same thing for five weeks, but more like these are our five ingredients that we use a ton of. Um, and then I would also work on stockpiling maybe the 10 most expensive things that you buy. Um, so I was kind of brainstorming that with uh, someone over on a plane ride this week um, as he was discussing how his family used to coupon uh, and they needed to get back into it. So, you know, pondering what are those 10 most expensive things? Those are the things that if we don't have a ton of space, that's what we're going to stockpile on. And then we're going to buy week in and week out the other items that we can't handle um, space wise. So, you know, you have to ponder what your 10 most expensive things are, but I would guess for most of us, it's paper goods, it's laundry detergent, you know, and you can kind of go down the list. But in terms of ingredients, I would still aim for five or six to have a good chunk on hand of those items. Um, okay, so as we um, jump into actually um, how to meal plan, now that I got off my soapbox, uh, I just, I, I don't want anyone to kind of... Uh, take it from the wrong direction. So that's why I have my little soapbox. So to get started on meal planning, if you're not already, or maybe you're just having some issues keeping on it, because it's always great to, you know, set out a goal, but it doesn't work. I want you to think really small first. So I've seen some folks that have, I mean, their old hat, they've been doing this for ages and they plan for a month. Um, that is not me. That would not work in our house. Uh, and it doesn't matter how long we had been meal planning, it wouldn't work. Uh, we are always going to have an unexpected meeting that pops up next week um, that three weeks ago I didn't know about. Or you get the idea. There's just, it depends on your life. But a month out, it isn't going to fly for us. So we are week by week basis, which is perfect for us. We can sit down. We can say, okay, what's on the schedule this week? Um, and start to map out meals based on this week's schedule. We also have a few ruts that we don't break. Um, and I think most people are like that. Um, I don't think that we are all alone in our little world and our little ruts. Um, now, you may not have some that are quite as deep as ours. Uh, one of those being that our Sunday rarely changes. So uh, if I were to show you every single page in this, every Sunday would look the same. Um, we have a Sunday roast and we have Chinese for dinner. Um, and that's really just my husband and I have Chinese for dinner. It's just our Sunday night date night uh, on the couch. So it, it's ruts like that. So I'm not even having to think about Sunday every single week. It's always the same. And I have a feeling that in some way you have some kind of rut that is like that too. It takes some pressure off um, since you you know, already really have that day mapped out. Maybe in your house, that's Friday night. It's always pizza night or whatever it might be. You get the idea. But we all have something that is semi kind of stuck in, uh, stuck in stone. We always do it. 
that's going to take some of the pressure off in terms of trying to figure out what um, you're going to plan for that night. So first step is figuring out what in the world this week holds. Do we have a night that we need to eat out? Do we have a night um, that, you know, everybody's gone? So our horrible night for meal plans are Monday nights. Um, hey, guys, it's Monday night. Uh, and don't worry, it's not you. You know, nothing against you. Um, it really is how much we have going on on Monday nights and that we need to leave by 515 to get to our American Heritage Girls Troop and we finish that at 7.45 and we get in the car and we run home and we get here in time for 8.30. So somewhere in there, dinner has to appear, but it really can't. So that is the one that is the tricky night for us. And sometimes that is, it's pizza night. Sometimes it's it's been in the crock pot all day. But if anything, that's the one night where meal planning pays off because it stops us from eating out. Um, so you know, that's kind of the reason, the big reason for us to meal plan. Yes, I have a pantry full of food. I could cook it at any point. But if I don't have a plan, there are totally going to be nights that end up in a fast food line um, that costs money, that costs way more than it would cost for me to put dinner on the table based on the way that we cook and we shop. So, you know, anything to cut that cost is huge. Um but that's the first part. Uh, you know, Laura's chiming in Wednesday's fish night, Friday's pizza night, Sunday. You know, I'm glad. I'm glad, Laura, that I'm not alone in our little ruts um, with what we eat. And really, for us, it's just Sundays, and we have lots of other rotations with that. Um, so we're mapping out our, our, our plan for the week. We're putting in our ruts that we're kind of stuck in, which are great to have. They're kind of just your constants in life. It's a good thing. Uh, and then let's start to fill in the rest. Now, I've shared with you guys that I don't meal plan, breakfast, and lunch um, ever. So breakfast and lunch for us, breakfast is just you know what your options are and you grab it. All of our kids are old enough to get their own breakfast except for the two-year-old. And the poor two-year-old sometimes, um, because she's the only one that can't get breakfast herself, uh, it might be a little later when all of a sudden someone realizes that nobody got the two-year-old breakfast, but everybody else handles it for themselves. Lunch uh, is usually leftovers from whatever we've had the previous nights or you make a sandwich. Those are your two options as well. Or grab soup if we have it, which come summer, it won't be in the pantry. But those are your three options for lunch. Uh, and then I plan dinner. And usually with dinner, we try to cook extra so that it can, can carry over and be that leftovers for lunch. Um, so that's kind of the, play, the way that I'm going. And I would recommend if you do not like leftovers or you don't tend to cook extra, that you still plan on where you want to go um, for lunches, because if you don't have a bunch of leftovers, planning on leftovers for lunch, it isn't going to fly. Um, so, you know, just to kind of show that for us, that we don't meal plan those items. These are really all leftovers. Now, you can see two things that I stuck on for this week. Um, Wednesdays are our day that we go to a co-op program, so it's just packed lunches day for the kids. And then Thursday, um, we're going to be on the road a little bit. So I did plan, you know what, we need to pre-pack some sandwiches or we need to go ahead and make some pasta tuna salad, which is our go-to whenever we're going to do a picnic. Um, but everything else is just a pretty much normal week. Um, so just so you get that idea. And we're going to talk meals um, in just a second. So um, let me get to some questions really quick. Um, so Dolly uh, is looking for a produce co-op in the Columbia area. Um, Dolly, I can put in the chats um, the co-op that we are a part of. Um, it'll just take me a second to find it. Um, but we are part of a co-op that is in Columbia. I highly recommend it. I am not part of it. I do not run it. Um, but I do attend every time we have it um, and absolutely love it. Um, and with that... Um, if you are not part of a co-op, then I would recommend that you look into something like that. It's buying produce in bulk. So for us, we um, do this every other, I guess, every first and third Saturday. I'm trying to find it quickly, and now Facebook is just being a pill. Um, never wants to take you right there. Okay, here we go. So I'm sticking it in the comments um, for you right now, and you can just kind of scroll up and find that, hopefully versus me scrolling down and finding your question right away. Um, I just stuck it in. It's a Facebook group. Uh, um, and if you click on that, you can ask Dolly to join the Facebook group. It is just in the Columbia area. It's just some folks that put it together. Uh, but we meet 
every first and third Saturday and get a bunch of produce. So this week we left with about 50 pounds of produce, maybe more, um, for 25 bucks. That's what it is every week. And it's a huge, huge blessing. And it does factor into our meal plan as well. Um, sometimes I plan this out before produce week. So I have a um, little bit of spinach stuck in there at the top that you can see. It's kind of trying to work in some things. We are going to have a weird one there. Uh, Mexican soup and corn on the cob because they want to use up some corn on the cob that was in our produce basket as well before it gets, um, uh, you know, not as not quite as fresh. So that is the one that um, I would recommend if you're in the area. Um, Paige is asking, you know, how do we find a co-op near us? The best ways, Paige, uh, are to use... Um, Oh, localharvest.org, so localharvest.org. You can put in your zip code, and you'll be able to find any farm, any co-op that's near you. That's the first step. Um, the USDA does keep a list of farmer's markets. Um, I don't know how much of a help that's going to be, but it's a start. And um, the other option is that you could always start your own. Um, so the one that we're a part of is just a group of people that started a co-op, um, and you could totally do that too. It's really not that hard to, to manage and to run. Um, so uh, Jenny's asking, can I pay with points and earn points back on the Irish Spring deal at Walgreens? Um, you're going to make me look up the Irish Spring deal at Walgreens just so I can tell you correctly. Um, but with the... Okay, so um, it is. It's a buy, it's a buy two Irish Spring body washes. So yes, if you pay with points, you will earn more points back because it's not a like buy ten dollars worth of Irish Spring. Then you would not want to pay with points. But whenever it's just a buy a set amount, buy one, buy two, you can use your points and get more points back. You'll be just fine to do that. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. But just to kind of give you the yes and, and the reason why. Um, oh, and Jennifer, do I order Chinese or do I make it? No, if we ordered Chinese, it would never find us, Jennifer. We live way too far out in the woods. Um, so we make it, uh, and we usually stick with the frozen P.F. Chang's or the N of Asians, uh, which go by BOGO. They have high-value coupons. We can usually get – they make two. It's a dinner for two, um, and we can usually get them for less than two bucks um, for the whole kit. And then we just add rice to it, and that is dinner. Um, since it's just my husband and I, and we put all the kids in bed, um, and we eat our Chinese, and we watch our PBS mystery, um, that's our date night every Sunday night. Uh, that dinner for two is perfect for us. Um, let's see. Oh, Elizabeth says, I have a hard time figuring out the algorithm of coupons to get the best deal and large quantities of each item. So, Elizabeth, when, to kind of back up, so what I was saying where we want to buy enough of that item to last us until it's back on sale it's usually enough for six weeks, which honestly, for most items that we purchase, it isn't really that much. So we're probably talking, even for my family of seven, um, probably a max of four, maybe five on items to get us through a six-week period of time. And, and five would be like cereal. It would be a, a, something that we're eating every single day. Most items, it's probably three or four, and that's plenty for our family of seven. Now, I don't know who, how many you're shopping for, but I wouldn't be in the mindset that we need 30 or 40 of anything. I think between Sunday papers, printable coupons, and digital coupons, you should be pretty good to get three or four of an item, if not even have more coupons than that. Um, okay, so let's talk recipes. Um, and, you know, Jake's saying, how can we do meal planning even if we just want to follow stores? So I want to give you guys a website um, that I use, and I think that you will, ho I hope that you will also find it very helpful. So um, this website is uh, called Supercook, uh, and it is supercook.com. Uh, and this, you're actually looking at, um, I'm logged in. This is my account. But if you've never used Supercook, I would recommend that you log in, which you can just do up in the top corner, just so that it saves your settings. And the first time that you come in, it's only going to take you like five minutes. It is not going to take that long. But what you're going to do the first time you come in is, well, I guess you could take this one of two ways. Because I am meal planning off of my pantry, I come in and I would, I go ahead and click on anything that's in the pantry. And, and really, I haven't... Um, even fully done it, I could sit here and probably fill in some more. 
But there are some things that I rarely purchase. I'm not, I, I don't buy cottage cheese. I don't uh, have buttermilk in the fridge. So some of these I would never check, um, but you can t- see the things that are kind of always on hand. I do have some mozzarella. Um, so you can come in and you can do this for every single category if you want, all the way down. And then once you're done, so right now it's saying um, beasts on everything that I've entered, which I've entered a lot of everything that we have. So meats has all been entered, um, you know, as we go through. But I can make 16,000 recipes. That's a lot. Um, now, we tend to stick pretty much with our favorites. Um, so it's a, I would say... We may add in a recipe that we do not normally make um, once every other week. It's not often that I go and just start pulling out recipes we've never made for a couple of reasons. One, they usually call for something that I don't have in the pantry, so I need to kind of be prepped if I did want to add that to the meal plan to make sure that it is on the shopping list to get that random spice. Um, but the other reason is that they actually take me longer. I, you know, if I'm cooking from something that I always cook, I don't even have to think about it. Um, my kids are good at helping even. My older girls are starting to help us cook and even do some meals completely by themselves. So adding in something we don't normally cook, it's like, ugh, that's work. Um, and I'm not a huge, like, I love to cook kind of person. I don't mind doing it, but it isn't, I, you know, I, I don't write a cooking blog. There you go. Um, it's just not my passion. So I'm not going to come in here and fill my menu plan with everything here. But to step back, uh, you know, you're asking how can we how can we plan a menu completely based off of what's on sale? Here you go. Don't log in. Plug in the sales. And I say don't log in so that it's not pulling off of what's in your pantry. Plug in the meat that you see that's on sale that's a decent price. Now, keep in mind, not all the meat that is in that weekly ad is actually a good price. Uh, Publix, starting Wednesday, has salmon on sale. Uh, It is $5 a filet that is a a 5.2-ounce filet. Guys, that would come to, oh, wow, um, like $15-plus a pound. Do not, do not buy that. No salmon next week on your meal plan. It is not on sale. So uh, please, if you're going to meal plan off of the sales, make them real sales before we go off. And we start menu planning on them. But you could come in here. You could plug in the key things that are part of that uh, sale ad. So they have, you know, chicken breasts is on sale, ground beef's on sale, whatever. Plug in the meats. Plug in some of the produce. And it's going to split spit out recipes that you can completely make based on those sales. So um, Super Cook is fun both ways. It helps you plan based off of what's on in your um, fridge or in your pantry. And if you wanted to just completely go off of the sale, don't log in so that it doesn't have up here all my ingredients. Instead, it's going to have whatever I've just clicked for the sale ad, and it's going to pull recipes for that. Now, if I found things that I absolutely love, then I can just push the little heart button. Uh, so you can see I've saved that one right there. I can push the little heart button, and it is saved Um, for me to make and kind of over in my profile um, where I can then see all my favorites right here. Now, I I do think this is hilarious that you can link in. I won't say her name because she will wake up in the room behind me and start to talk to me. Uh, But you can, um, we call her Alejandra or we make up other funny names for her so she doesn't wake up. But you can link her in too if you want and add things to what is in your pantry or take them out of your pantry if you want to get super, super techie with this. Um, But it is a really great free website. Now, there are websites that you can pay for to um, meal plan. And that that is not necessarily, oh, wrong button, um, not necessarily what I would recommend. Um, I've shared them in the past. I've tried them in the past, kind of done a review with you guys in the past. Um, the, The hard part for me with those is that you're paying for it. And this is really, this needs to come out of your grocery budget at that point. Um, So if I'm paying you $10 a month to come up with recipes, you know, that's probably like three meals right there at the cost once we're couponing uh, how much we would normally pay for a meal. Uh, I could have just put three more meals on the table. So I'm not a big one on those. The other reason that I'm not a huge fan of them is that you're getting a, me- a meal every single night planned for you, but they're not your normals. They're not your favorites. And so you're not going to end up cooking every single one of them. Uh, you're going to end up putting your favorites back into the mix and not really utilizing the whole meal plan that was just made for you. So 
that's kind of the hard part to have to ponder whether or not you're really getting the full value on paying for that. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, Paige, you can. So really the recipes with Supercook that you're saving um, is is on other, sa other sites. So it still is going to send you, uh, and I can pop this back up so you can see again, but if you look on this, um, it's really like this guy right here is on food.com. This is on delish.com. So the recipes aren't actually on Supercook. They've kind of um, brought in recipes from all over the web, um, but it's just helping you to find them based on your ingredients. Um, so I'm still going to end up on, you know, this one, for example, craft recipes site, uh, Supercook's loading it, and then I can print it and use it right there once it decides to load. Um, so you get the idea. Um, I'm actually going to close it because I don't want to kill my internet while I'm trying to do that. Um, but hopefully that helps um, as you, you know, figure this out. So I can like it, I save it that way, and then I, I can just easily come in and find um, everything that I've saved. So, uh, you know, here are some that I saved just this week. Uh, I don't keep a lot of things in here because really for me, it's just to brainstorm. Um, and again, we don't add in a bunch of new things um, to our menu plan on a regular basis. But this is a good way to do, um, you know, just some exploring. Now, one other way that you can use a site like this, uh, and just to go back to full screen for a minute, is that one of the things that I would recommend if you are just getting started in creating a meal plan is to think about some of your prep time. So this kind of goes into meal planning and freezer cooking, I guess, in a, in a way. It's really to think about how can we reduce some time. So um, let's see, I can back up. Um, but there was a week, um, it's always fun to kind of see our, our past ones as well. Um, yeah, so if there are times that we have maybe two chicken meals um, in the same week, then I can go ahead and I can make um, shredded chicken once and freeze some of it and have it ready for uh, the next meal in a few more nights, or we can brown extra hamburger and have it ready. Um, but that is a good way, too, to use a site like this. If you've got one idea, like, oh, I have our go-to, we're going to do this, but we've got some extra um, what could, let me find a chicken recipe. So um, let me show you how to do that particularly. Um, so let's back up on Supercook really quick. Um, so I can come up here and I can actually say, you know what, I want to look for dinner. And um, I want to look with that dinner to have a key ingredient specifically of chicken, uh, chicken breast. Oh, click it and then close out. So now it's gonna sort through all the recipes that I can make from my pantry, and it's gonna show me dinners that use chicken breast. Um, so if you are wanting to go specifically off of something, this is a really quick way to find it. Or again, if I you know I want to go with Indian, so I want a really good curry chicken recipe, then we can kind of narrow it down even further. Um, and there we go, it's a whole bunch of chicken curry. Um, but you get the idea. Uh, just the fast ways to use this. So uh, it's kind of funny. I don't usually give you guys, uh, you know, run throughs on how to use other websites very often, but this one I think you will find very, very helpful when it comes to trying to quickly either use ingredients you have, plan off of a sale ad and not off of your pantry, or to plan off of your pantry and maybe to be more prepared with like two chicken meals this week and two ground beef meals this week so that we're doing a little less prep than we would normally do. So hopefully that helps as well to kind of see that side of things. Um, okay, so let's go back um, and jump into some other questions um, that you guys have. Um, can I share easy, affordable recipes? So Paige, you know, for us, I, I would say when you're going easy and affordable, we don't do anything super fancy. So we do a meat, a veggie, and a starch most nights. Um, so our go-to might be um, we'll haul out the Instapot and we'll do um, chicken in the Instapot. This week we got super, super cheap on this, and this was just a trial and error, but it worked great. Um, so we've gotten really good deals on those Campbell sauce packets that are meant to go in your crock pot or in the oven. So we actually used a Campbell oven sauces. We put chicken in the Instapot, poured a Campbell oven sauces on top of it, and closed up the Instapot 
25 minutes later, dinner was ready. So, I mean, it's really meant for the crock pot or the oven, but it works uh, and super simple. Uh, in terms of affordable, that little packet was less than a buck on sale, so you're just adding in the chicken. Um, our normal starch is rice. We eat a lot of rice to the point that I have a 20 pound bag um, in the pantry and it's probably half eaten. Uh, and we'll go through that in just a, a month or so um, with the amount of rice that we eat. So that is also on the affordable side because you're not gonna even get uh, pretty much any other starch that cheap. Um, but what I would look for in terms of easy and affordable, um, some of your go-to sites for this, and, and it sounds you know, very uh, all canned goods or all processed, which I know make people cringe, but um, don't look at the ingredients if, if you don't wanna use their ingredients. But honestly, you know, Betty Crocker and General Mills, they have a lot of craft. They have a lot of very, very easy recipes on their sites. And the point is that they know that those are the folks that are typically buying their products, but tailor those, if you're doing only you know, clean eating and whole food, whole foods type eating, tailor that to what you have. So you know, if it's calling for canned tomatoes and you wanna use fresh tomatoes, do that. Um, but it is gonna be super quick meals because that's what they're tailoring themselves to. Um, Rachel Ray and her 30 minute meals would be another great one to check into. I don't know that I would go out and brown if you're trying to go super quick recipes, though we love some out and brown in this house. Uh, and he has probably the best biscuit recipe that is out there. Um, but it's not necessarily going to be the fastest as he is very particular uh, with what you're using and the science behind everything you're using. So it's really finding some, maybe some chefs, if that's the case, that you like their style. And so it's, it's kind of working for you to duplicate those meals in your house. Like, for example, our favorite go-to shepherd's pie is a Rachel Ray quick 30-minute meal shepherd pie. It's delicious. We've made it for probably 10 years. Uh, and it is still out on the web because that's the joys of getting recipes online. Um, okay, so um, can I use digital? So to jump into the couponing side and out of meal planning again, um, can I use digital and store coupons together? So Elizabeth, yes. Um, to give you an example, if you pull up the Publix ad that starts on Wednesday, guys, if you have a Publix near you, you better be ready to go to Publix next week. There are some crazy good Procter & Gamble deals, but one of those is on Pantene. We have a Pantene Publix store coupon that you can print from Publix or that is in the, the Publix coupon flyer, uh, the purple coupon flyer. And we have um, Publix digital, I'm sorry, Pantene digital coupons uh, and Pantene coupons from the Sunday paper. So I can always pair those together. Now, when you say um, store coupons and digital, though, I do want to make sure we're all in the same boat, Elizabeth, because if I go to Publix.com and I load their digital offers uh, that are Publix e-coupons, those are not store coupons. Kroger e-coupons, those are all manufacturer's coupons, uh, and I cannot use those with another manufacturer's coupon just so we have that kind of all evened out. I can totally use them with store coupons though, like in the purple and the green flyer at Publix, you're just fine to do that, or CVS store coupons that print at the CVS Coupon Center, you're fine to do that as well. Um, let's see, oh, and Elizabeth is asking the meal planning book that I use, um, this was my little splurge, so this is from Erin Condren, um, and it's like 10 bucks, I guess. It has enough pages in it to plan uh, once a week for over a year, um, and I just started using it um, this spring. Now, there's pros and cons to this as well, so it's fun. I always know where it is. I tend to keep it in my purse so that I can plan when I'm on the go, but I will say sometimes the easiest weeks, and my husband will probably chime in on this in the comments too, the easiest weeks are when I don't have it in here, but I write it on a piece of paper and it ends up on the front of the fridge because when it's on the front of the fridge, just on a plain old boring piece of paper, everybody knows the plan versus when it's in the book, then someone's got to go and find the book uh, because I have it in my head, but it doesn't mean everybody else has it. So, you know, I don't, I don't know that you need to go fancy. Just a piece of paper works perfectly, um, especially if you're just doing a week at a time. We don't need to get into some kind of crazy big calendar to be able to do that. Uh, and Katie, what, the day that I typically meal plan, 
um, is usually Sundays. So I share it normally on Sunday afternoons with you guys when I pop in to share new coupons. And I typically meal plan kind of within the hour or two hours before then, just sitting down looking at our week that's coming and planning out our meals then. Uh, I guess if anything, that should prove to you that it's not based on when I shop because I don't shop until Wednesday. I won't be in a grocery store until Wednesday. Um, so I'm kind of planning that first half of the week completely off of what's in the pantry uh, and then going to grab some other things if I need them when we get to the store on Wednesday. Um, so yeah, so Miss J, just tuning in, I never freeze meals and I'm scared to do so. So what's a tip for beginners? So let's go to some freezer cooking. Kind of talk, we've talked a lot about menu plans and some ideas of where to get some recipes, but let's talk freezer cooking specifically. Pretty much anything that you make, Miss J, or everybody, you can freeze. So if we're talking casseroles, chilies, um, any kind of soup, they can all be frozen and they could be frozen before you cook them except for the meat. Let's go ahead and pre-cook all of our meat. Um, if we're going to mix it together and put it in something, um, go ahead and pre-cook your meat and then freeze away. What I would not freeze is soups that have um, pasta in them. The pasta doesn't always come out well. So go ahead and um, freeze the soup and then add in the pasta when you're going to reheat it. So for example, um, if we make chicken noodle soup here, uh, which a lot of times when we make it, my husband is the soup maker and the stock pot, which is crazy tall, uh, he will have to the top. Um, you know, that would feed us for a month if we were to eat it all. So before you add the noodles, let's pull off half of that soup because you should be adding noodles last anyway, hopefully. Um, let's pull off half the soup and let's go ahead and just put it in a plastic Ziploc container. You can put it in bags and freeze it in bags. You are going to need it to cool off a little bit before you put it in the freezer, um, but let's freeze it there. And then when you pull it back out, you're good to just thaw it and add the noodles and cook for maybe another 10 minutes with the noodles in it. So, um, but it was, it's a complete meal. It was already cooked. You pretty much did everything except the noodles. So that's, you know, one example of how it would differ in not freezing those noodles, but um, chili can go straight in the freezer after it cools. Uh, when we do casseroles, we will um, not bake the second one. So for example, if I make a shepherd's pie, um, then the one shepherd's pie for tonight goes straight in the oven. The other shepherd's pie, which the meat is cooked, everything in it is cooked, but it, it just needs its 20 minutes or so in the oven. It's not going to go in the oven. It's going to get um, aluminum foil over the top, maybe two layers of aluminum foil over the top right on the top of it, what you want to do with it when it comes out. Because like in my house, some of these are going to come out when I'm not home. Uh, so they need to know what it is and how to cook it when it comes out. And then just put it away in the freezer. I would also put a date on it if you're one of those where it's going to go in there and you're going to long forget what it is. And you need to know when you put it in there. Um, but very, very easy. Now there are some things that can go straight in without even having to be pre-prepped or cooked. So um, we did a big list of freezer cooking meals and I'll try to find these and put them in the comments uh, here in a second. But one of those in particular was uh, corn and potato chowder. It's a huge favorite around here. And that one you can literally cut up the potatoes, put in frozen corn, um, put in a little bit of flour that it needs, and that's ready to go in the freezer. I don't need to cook it. I don't need to do anything to it right now. I will just dump all of that into a crock pot and I will cook it when it comes out of the freezer. So um, there's some in, in freezer cooking land that doesn't need much, but most of it I would consider the easy way to handle freezer cooking to be that you're basically going to do some of the work now. I'm going to pre-cook, I'm going to put it all together, and then I'm just going to freeze it or I'm going to I'm going to make extra and freeze one and eat one. Um, so sometimes that will help too uh, for folks that are just getting like their feet wet in freezer cooking is to just double the recipe. And guys, you already have the pan and it's already dirty. So what's the point in browning two pounds of hamburger versus browning up one pound? Um, so that's the perk. Uh, if you don't feel completely ready to freezer cook, one thing that I would encourage you to do is freezer prep. Um, so this is where maybe I take, you know, an hour or two and I go ahead and I chop up just a bag of onions and I have them chopped and diced and frozen. I don't even need to blanch onions, just stick them straight in a bag and straight in the freezer. They're good to use, just little piecemeal as you need them for 
various recipes versus having to cut up an onion or cut up a quarter of an onion every time a recipe calls for some little bits of onion. So that is one that is always in our freezer, just bagged diced onion. Uh, another one that you can always have ready is going ahead and cooking some meat. So um, for us, when meat comes in from Zacon and we have a bunch of chicken and it's all raw and I need to get it put up in the freezer, instead of putting it all up in the freezer today, let's go ahead while it's thawed um, and let's chop some up and you can shred it, you can cook it diced, however you want to put it up, however you normally cook it. Um, go ahead and cook it now, just a couple pounds of it and have that in the freezer. And that's an easy go-to if you're wanting to put it into a casserole or even on top of a salad. It's good and ready to go. So you don't have to go full on freezer cooking. I would call that freezer prepping, um, but you can do that with veggies, you can do that with meat, and it's going to save you a ton of time uh, and a ton of dishes to just knock it all out now. Uh, and I think you're going to be quite happy once you start to do that uh, and, and kind of changing up how you have to prep. Um, can you freeze cooked meat? And if so, how do you reheat them? So Paige, yes, as we're talking about. So ground beef, for example, um, I am going to freeze that in the Ziploc bag um, after I've ground it. I am not going to vacuum seal that or try to hold on to that for months and months and months now. So when I'm pre-cooking meat, it usually is going in the inside freezer and it's probably going to be pulled out in the next week or two. Um, sometimes it's going to be pulled out for various little things. So if we're going to have pizza night and someone wants some ground beef on their pizza, boom, it was a little topping and I didn't have to make a whole pan of ground beef just so you could have a sprinkle of ground beef on your pizza. Um, so there are huge ways. Uh, in that one, all I'm going to do is really just kind of try to break off a hunk and then just thaw that piece. We use the microwave. I am not anti-microwave in this house, but a toaster oven would work fine too uh, if you were anti-microwave. Uh, and they don't need very long in there until they're workable. So most of the time with your meats that you've pre-cooked, you're still going to end up putting them in something. You don't want to eat it cold. So I don't need to fully thaw it. I can actually put it in my chili or in my spaghetti sauce cold, and I can let it finish heating up um, with the boiling, bubbling spaghetti sauce. So um, don't panic on how to fully reheat them because the meal itself is probably going to do a lot of that for you. Uh, okay, so, um, oh yeah, and you guys are all talking about where I get my chicken over in the comments. So we do, um, we get most of our chicken from Zacon, uh, and um, our chicken pickup was a week ago, but I'm glad to see some of you guys have chicken pickup this week, so they're still delivering. Uh, you know, it's probably already come for most of you in your area, so if you've not ever bored from them, um, but that is where we get chicken, ground beef, um, we've gotten chuck roasts from them, a lot of things from there, um, for sure. Is it okay to, to freeze blocks of cheese? So Rhonda, with cheese, uh, you can freeze it. However, you are not going to want to use it for anything other than baking because it's not you're not going to want to cut it up and eat it like you would on a cheese and cracker plate. It's going to have a little bit of a dis different consistency to it. It's not going to have a firmness like you had probably wanted it on a cheese and cracker plate. So perfect for casseroles if you froze it, but not perfect for much else. Um, we freeze pretty much anything else, though. So Paige is saying butter and bread. Butter is totally all over my freezer. This is the time of the year to buy it. It is still on sale next week in some stores. So if you've not stocked up, you should stock up. Um, milk, I would freeze as well. Shanna's saying she freezes milk. Um, uh, milk is a great thing to freeze. It already has the little indentations on the side, and they just pop out. But the, it's not going to bust. It's not going to have any problems. Um, we'll even refill our girls' juice containers with water and freeze those because it does a great job of filling the extra gaps in your freezer to keep it even more energy conscious. But also, it makes for free ice whenever you're traveling and you need an ice chest. So, uh, and you need ice for your ice chest. Um, so, you can get anything in there. Don't be afraid of those plastic bottles filled with liquids. Uh, they're going to be just fine. I promise. Do not, however, freeze anything in a glass bottle. Not pretty. Uh, don't do that ever. <laughs> uh, and we've all been there. You've all stuck something in the freezer uh, to get it to cool down really fast and, you know, Cokes, whatnot, and you've learned the hard way. Um, but yeah, uh, you'll be fine in a plastic bottle, though, for milk. Um, okay, so trying to make sure I haven't missed anyone's questions. Um, can you freeze cream cheese? Yes, you could, but again, that is also going to be a baking one. It is going to change consistency on that and kind of make it separate a little bit, but 
Uh, it is perfect for any kind of casseroles that I'm wanting to put it on. You're good to go. Um, milk even will kind of settle. So milk, you'll need to shake it up a tad. If you've gotten whole milk, um, probably a little worse than the 2% will um, for sure. Um, and with milk, it does taste exactly the same, Paige. We've never had any um, folks complain around here on milk that it tasted off. Milk's an interesting one because it basically freezes time. So if your milk was going to expire in seven days and you put it in the freezer, it will now expire seven days from when you pull it out. So you do need to, one of the big things if you are going to freeze milk, I would recommend that when you pull it out, you write a new date on the front. Um, and another thing to help you as well is when you put it in, writing how many days, just a number on the milk, how many days you had left until it would expire. Because you, you know, if you pull it out in two weeks, you're going to have no clue uh, how, how long it had left uh, until it expired. And you won't remember when you pulled it out once you know, a day or two goes by. So those two numbers, how long it had left, just a number on the jug of milk, and then writing a new date on the jug of milk once you pull it out and it thaws. That will definitely help. Um, oh, and Laura's got a great tip too, guys. Freezing red wine and ice cube trays um, for, uh, I can never say these things well, but bologna, bologna sauce? I need to take some French classes. Um, so that is a huge one. Uh, and there's a lot that you can do in ice cube trays. I've seen people do pesto, uh, making a bunch of pesto and freezing it in ice cube trays so you can just pop it out for recipes. Um, it would be another one, um, and this is just a little inside tip, but if you ever cook with the big, we always get deals on the big, huge 32-ounce uh, containers of broth, but if you don't use that up within a day or two, it's disgusting. Broth does not last in a fridge after it's been opened, even really past 24 hours. It's really not something you should be holding on to, um, but your extra broth, you could easily put in an ice cube tray and then be able to pop that out to have some extra chicken broth and not waste it, not have it be gone because you didn't use it all up right then. Um, so Tammy, how big is my freezer? I do have an outside chest freezer, or sorry, stand up, um, stand up freezer that is taller than I am. So I'm not sure on its cubic size because we bought it probably six or seven years ago now, um, but it is pretty big. It is big enough that I can take the box of chicken from Zacon and just slide it in on a shelf. Uh, and I will say that I have to, um, I highly recommend it. Now, I'm not going to tell you you have to go out and buy a freezer, but it, it is totally worth it. Um, okay. <laughs> um, let's see. You guys, as Shanna says, she's getting dizzy trying to keep up with all the comments. Y'all have kept me busy tonight with all the comments, too. Um, so, Dolores, I think I've hit your question on the freezing casseroles with pasta in them. In a sense, um, so some of them, yes, we will definitely freeze like a baked ziti casserole. Um, but what I would recommend with any casserole with pasta in them is that we're not doing that final baking. So you still typically with casseroles that have pasta in them, we typically want to um, still have our pasta a little al dente. You know, it's still got a little, maybe a little tiny crunch to it so that it finishes baking and finishes softening in the oven. So we're not going to finish baking it. So baked ziti, you're going to pre-boil maybe half the amount of time, put it in your pan, put your pasta sauce on it, put your cheese all over it if you want to, or you can hold off on the cheese if it makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. It's ready to go in the freezer. When it comes out of the freezer, it's still got, you know, 30 minutes in the oven with cheese on top. Uh, and that is going to finish cooking your pasta. So you're fine to put that in the freezer because you haven't fully cooked it. The soup is the one where I would recommend holding off because what normally happens, especially in our house, is that we cook a bunch of soup, and then for leftovers, we freeze half of it. But if that soup has pasta in it and you already fully cooked that pasta, it does not come out well from the freezer. It comes out very, very mushy. Um, so that's why with the soup with pasta, I would just recommend let's take half now and freeze it before the pasta goes in, then finish cooking the rest for dinner tonight, and then we'll add the pasta to the rest when we pull it out of the freezer. Um, let's see. <laughs> um, and uh, folks, uh, yeah, Mama Maid is also saying, you know, don't forget about your homemade baby food and freezing that in ice cube trays as well. So we can totally go meal prepping for the little people uh, we, however, for us, when our kids were eating only baby food, 
we did not tend to have them on actual baby food for very long. Usually they ate whatever we ate uh, and we would use an immersion blender. And so if we're having pot roast, you were having pot roast with the immersion blender. Um, so we didn't always um, go in and, you know, freeze individual meals just for them. They just ate whatever we were eating. But yes, ice cube trays all around for, um, you know, even saving fresh spices from the front yard. If you're going to pull off some fresh rosemary and chop that up, fresh pasta or pesto sauce, sorry, um, your leftover beef uh, and chicken broths, all sorts of things that it's just a way to not throw that away. You didn't finish that container. Let's put it in ice cube trays and let's freeze it up. Um, okay, so Aaron says, uh, yes, Google is your best friend for knowing what, how long something's freezable and whether or not it's good or bad. I completely ag agree with that. Um, or even the person whose name I can't announce um, back in the kitchen because she'll start to talk. Uh, you'll be amazed at what she knows. Uh, my children have had to do some vocabulary lately. and like, you know what? Stop coming and asking me vocabulary. Just ask her. She can tell you. Um, she is your new, like, Google mom. Just ask her. She'll look it all up. So either way, whatever you have in your house, um, so there's probably a computer to help you figure out the little tiny things. And Dolores, yes, you can freeze eggs. Um, I have personally never tried that, though I feel like we should because I've got probably six dozen in my fridge. Um, but what I would recommend, not only on Google on that one, but just from a personal standpoint, I would probably go ahead and take them out of their shells and freeze them as if you were doing kind of, you know, egg whites and egg yolks from the grocery store, like you would buy them in the container. Um, uh, and maybe even doing those in ice cube trays as well, so that you could easily pop out one egg at a time if that's what you wanted to do. Um, and Paige is asking, is it cheaper to cook for your dog or buy dog food on sale with the coupons? Um, Paige, my dog would love it if we fed them from the table, but we do dog food. They don't get anything special. Um, and uh, my father-in-law, who is a vet, would also say that is the way to go. They just are not geared towards eating from our table. Um, that's not meant for them uh, and the foods that we eat on a regular basis. Um, so... I would say let's just stick with dog food. And we see some great deals um, for sure uh, in terms of pet food versus needing to feed them regular people food, um, definitely. Um, okay, so I think we've hit um, everything. There was a CVS question that I skipped over earlier. So to try to uh, skim back up and make sure I didn't miss someone's CVS question, or I think I did, maybe I'm just losing my mind. Um, Oh, now I can't find it. Okay, so, well, if you had a CVS question and I didn't answer it, will you please ask it again? Because I didn't mean to not answer um, for sure. And, you know, so folks are asking other other ideas for getting meal plan ideas. So I shared Supercook. Supercook is great if I need to have an idea based on ingredients. So that's why I shared it, because a lot of times that's really the mode that we're in, is trying to match a sale ad or trying to match what's in the pantry. So that was Supercook that we shared earlier. Um, but you know, Pinterest, Google, uh, there are some great um, apps that you can use. Um, one, it is not free, um, but one that you can try. It has a free version. Um, and really, I, I can um, show you this one for two seconds. But just to come here and show you, um, this is Meal Lime. I guess I got um, to back up so you can see it from the start, but, um, uh, and even then it's not going to show you its name, but it is M E A L. So meal and then lime at the end. It is a free app. However, um, they have a way that you can, um, pay for upgrades to unlock certain meals. Um, but with this one, if you pay to unlock, and again, I did not, it will actually make a shopping list based on the recipes that you've put in your cart. So if that's what you want to do, um, you completely could. Now, I don't use this very often because I don't like things that make me want to have to pay for them. Y'all know that I'm very cheap. Um, but you can see, like, on um, on this particular one uh, that's kind of on the right-hand side of your screen that it says Pro. If you want the recipe for that, you're going to have to pay. Now, all the others that don't say pro, I don't have to pay. I could um, just click the little button and add this to my meal plan for the week. 
Uh, and then as soon as I do, um, so I'm, I'm just going to add a bunch. There we go. Everything that's not pro, because I don't want to pay for it. And then I hit done. It adds it to my meal plan. And then um, it adds it all to my grocery list. Uh, the problem here being that you possibly already have a lot of this in your house, but you could still go through that quickly and decide what you needed to add um, so that you had an idea of, you know, what I need to actually get in the store to make these meals that I just selected. So again, um, and I'll stick it in the comments in case, um, but it is, it's like you're doing meal time. I think that must have already been taken. Um, the funny names that we have for apps, but is meal lime um, is the name of that one. So just as another option um, for ways that could help you technology wise, help you to meal plan. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh yeah, so Heidi, I'm with you. So Heidi says, is there anyone else that got a rain check on the Purina Bella um, when it was free and they're still not in stock? Yep, I haven't found a single Publix that has gotten that back in stock in the Columbia area. I know you are towards Charleston. Um, so what I would do, Heidi, is ask your store manager and just tell them, hey, you have still not restocked on this. Can I get an extended rain check? And most of them will always write one. So it's just asking kind of, it's more of a complaint, but asking nicely and you'll usually get a yes answer on that. Um, so besides chili, big ziti, mac and cheese, lasagna, what are our favorite budget meals to freeze? So Shanna, um, you've already named some of them, but a lot of my favorite casseroles we will freeze. So um, poppy seed chicken, shepherd's pie, um, chicken pot pie. Oh goodness, I'm trying to think of what we've had out there recently. Potato and corn chowder. Um, beef stroganoff, um, those are some key ones that end up in our freezer on a regular basis. Um, and the beef stroganoff, we just wait on the noodles, but everything else is pretty much ready to go out in the freezer. Uh, and let me, okay, so with all of this, when freezing in ice cube trays, do I still put them in a large freezer bag? I do, Dolly, um, because I don't have the freezer trays for very long. Um, and I actually, there's one thing, it would be great. Um, I don't know if my husband could even find it in the kitchen, but one thing that we randomly stumbled upon that we now freeze things in, um, and it's not necessarily ice cube trays, but if you ever get those, um, they're reusable uh, cupcake little little things. And we found, oh, what is the name of it? Like um, the cupcake wrappers, but they're really made out of silicone. Uh, I found a clearance cupcake set one time that's supposed to make trains or something. They came in all these weird shapes. We have never once used it to bake in, but we use it in the freezer all the time because it can make, they, they hold a cup um, and I can put, um, we've done homemade cream and mushroom soup. We've done all sorts of things in that, freeze them in those little silicone cups and then they pop right out. Um, so I don't have any struggle with anything that's left over. So that's a good one too. You don't have to go ice cube trays. You can just kind of dig something out that you want that you already have around the house, just using those little silicone cups. Um, but we will pop them out and then put them in a Ziploc bag because we're gonna need them to freeze something else. Um, always kind of reusing that, or else you would have a freezer just filled with ice cube trays and you probably don't wanna go there. Um, but once they're frozen, you're good to pop them out. They're all individual and they're ready to go. We did this with baby food even. Um, so you can definitely kind of move that on and not have to keep them in the trays. And if you don't put them in the bag, and you kept them in the trays or you kept them in the little cups, um, the tops get a little freezer burnt just from being out and open in the freezer. So you do want to kind of seal them up so that's not a problem at all. Um, let's see. Uh, will they still honor the coupons with the rain check even if expired? So Paige, they should. So if your store will extend the rain check for you, then they're really extending the length of those expired coupons as well. Um, and hopefully your store will honor that. Um, some of them may say, you know what, it's not our fault. They never got restocked at the warehouse uh, and we're going to have to take it. it. It's not a public store policy that they extend the rain check. So this is really them um, just showing you good customer service. Most of them are going to do this without a problem, but there's always the one store that just has to be a pill. Um, so I'm not going to come right out and tell you that they will definitely extend rain checks, um, but it never hurts to ask. And when they do, then they definitely will extend that expired coupon too. Um, we can be long lost sisters, Heidi. I'm okay with that. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, and yes, Paige, once you pop them out of the ice cube tray, they do stay separate. As long as your freezer stays cold, they're not ever going to thaw and freeze and attach to each other. So they will remain um, fully individual little cubes all in that big Ziploc bag together. You're not going to have any problems with that. Um, oh, and Shanna's got a good one, um, putting stuffed cabbage in the freezer when cabbage was on sale. Another one that uh, would probably be do great in a freezer as well is stuffed green peppers. Whenever green peppers are on sale, they're going to come out just fine. They still have to go in the oven to bake. Um, so that would be a good one, too, to tuck in and just save for another day. Um, so in terms of meal planning, to kind of jump back uh, really quick overall, uh, we've talked a lot about just where things can go in the freezer and how long they can go. Yes, Paige, we totally freeze deli meat all the time um, because we will find some crazy good clearance deals, and I don't want to eat it all right now. Um, that is a go-to in this house. Um but in terms of meal planning, again, kind of back to where I started in the beginning, if you're just getting started on this, please do not try to go crazy. I have some sweet friends who take, you know, a Sunday afternoon and they go to a coffee shop and they plan out all their meals for the month. That is not most of us. Um, so while that sounds awesome, uh, it is probably going to drive most of us completely crazy. So um, don't try to do that if that is not you. Be okay with flexibility in your schedule. Another one that can help folks too is, so again, to kind of show you ours, it is mapped out by day. This is a little chart, um, but you don't have to do that too. So you could just meal plan with, you know what, these are six meals that we're going to eat this week. None of them are assigned to a day, um, but we just know that we're going to eat them and we know that we have the things in the house to eat these items. Uh, and that way you feel even a little less hemmed in. That used to be how we meal planned because I felt like at the end of a long day, I would look at that and be like, I don't, I don't want that. Why did we plan for that? Um, so we've gotten to where we're kind of completely cool with the, the actual assigned to a day. I love the fact that nobody asks me what's for dinner. I don't want to hear that. It's like my one most hated question um, right up there with when are we going to get there. Um, so I'm okay with it all mapped out by day now, but I didn't used to be. I used to be in, in some of y'all's boats as well. Um, so you can make this as easy and simple as you want to, but if you choose to not do a meal plan or some sort of plan, you are going to have more, ah, we have to get fast food, or we ran out of time and we have somewhere to be. So that is where meal planning with a busy schedule is gonna save you a lot more money. So we're already couponing and we're getting crazy good deals on our grocery, but now we're saving ourselves from the unexpected, unexpected trips to the grocery store, which add up, and unexpected trips to fast food or to eating out um, because you already have a plan. You're less likely to look at each other and say, you know what, I just wanna eat out tonight. I don't wanna think about it because really the part you don't wanna think about is what's for dinner. You've already done that thinking. Um, it's not the cooking part that most of us don't want to do. It's the having to sit there and stand in the pantry and wait for the pantry to tell me what I should cook. I don't know if y'all do that, but I've had those moments. And the pantry doesn't talk. He never tells us what to cook. Um, so this way, you took the time, you did the planning ahead of time, and you are much more likely to actually eat the food at home uh, and save a lot more money to do that um, for sure. Uh, especially if you're my boat, because once we take five kids to a restaurant, this is not cheap. Um, even though we try to convince them that they should all order water and you're not allowed to get anything else, they still grumble, you know, to this day. I don't know. Um, so Paige says, how do we keep frozen deli meat slices separated? So Paige, for us, we're going to freeze the deli meat, but then I'm going to pull it out in the morning around breakfast time, and I'm going to let it completely thaw before we eat it. So once we're ready to make sandwiches with it, it's just like the deli meat would have been if I had eaten it fresh from the store. So uh, I'm not going to try to use it frozen, though you could, I guess, if you were going to it, put it into a casserole or something. I mean, you could still slice that up, and it's going to do just fine. But we're typically pulling it out and using it for sandwiches just a couple weeks after we purchased it on sale. Um, so do I use a seal-a-meal system, Dolores? I do not. We don't have... Uh, any of the special little containers that can suck down and vacuum seal. Um, our vacuum seal can do that. We have a vacuum seal with a vacuum attachment for containers, but we're too cheap to buy the containers. Um, so we tend to just freeze our meals in um, the disposable like foil trays. 
Uh, you can get crazy good prices on those in restaurant supply stores in bulk. Costco, Sam's, if you have that membership, don't get it just for the, the trays. But we also see them go BOGO in the grocery stores all the time. We will also use the plastic Rubbermaid or Ziploc containers as well in the freezer, and they do just fine. They actually stack a little bit better than um, the foil pans. Um, once the foil pans are frozen, they stack great, but until they're frozen, they're a little tricky to stack and get more in there. Um, so Tammy, I actually did a, um, a video just a couple weeks ago of our pantry. So I can put that in uh, the comments as soon as we finish the link to that, but it was on in our Facebook list. Uh, if you go to Southern, uh, Southern Savers on Facebook, and then click on the videos tab, you will see it. So it's like a 10 minute, 15 minute tour of our pantry. I did not give you a tour of the freezer because the freezer is in the garage and the garage is a mess. Um, you know, there's just something about keeping it real and then there's something that's just too real uh, and that is too real in my boat. So it looks like everybody's freezer. We don't really need a tour, but you definitely don't need a tour of all my garage mess. Um, so there you go but I will stick a link in so that you can see the pantry and hopefully that will help um, for sure on all your dry goods and storing all of that. Okay, well, I'm gonna pop off. Um, we will be back next week, but ah, before I forget, I'm actually gonna do another Facebook Live tomorrow. I don't normally come live to you guys on Tuesday, but I've had a lot of folks asking if I can do one specifically on how we prep to get to the store. So I do all my store prep on Tuesday afternoon, so that is gonna be when we do it. Um, probably about 4.30 tomorrow afternoon, um, but you can always watch after the fact if you want. Um, so I'm going to enlist the kids because they help me normally too. And we are going to totally sit down and show you how we get ready for the grocery store, how we cut the coupons. Uh, we're usually ready for a trip in less than 30 minutes. I don't know that I'll hang with you, you know, make you watch us for a whole 30 minutes. Um, but that is the goal. So if you have anyone that's been trying to learn, like, how in the world do we use these lists or how is this going to save us money? You know, share that and help them to jump on with us. It's so easy. Uh, I had someone that was even saying she just bought her kids an iPhone and they have to pay her back and they're paying her back by cutting her coupons. So I said, you know what, make them tune in and watch so they'll be ready to go too. Um, so um, tomorrow, 430. That's about the time. It's usually because I've just finished Harris Teeter. Um, it'll pop in and um, we'll be good to go. So join me tomorrow afternoon walk through how to use Southern Savers lists, how to get your grocery list together as, as fast as possible. Um, and then we'll all be ready to go to the store if we all do it together. Um, so you guys have a great night and I will talk to you tomorrow.